uh, Chelsea nil. Nadim, I just want to go back to you. As a, as a player, I imagine you'd prefer to lose 3-0, but be beaten by a team who are just clearly better than you, playing better football, which we know Manchester City can, than today, where you, the door's open for you to walk through, but somehow you manage to slam it in your own face. Well, to be honest, I'll start by saying no player likes to lose, whichever way it is. But I think when you look at the way that Chelsea played today, I don't even know if every player in that team would have sensed how big an opportunity that was. I think, for example, Chilwell is a very good player, but he still probably now doesn't know there are people right there in the box. Nico Jackson himself doesn't know the importance of taking some of those chances. I think at times it is an element of a young performance. When you play against some of these more experienced sides who've been winning things almost year in, year out, it's the little details that matter. They know that City, for example, they knew that this wasn't going to be one of those games where they had all the possession, create tons of chances, but they knew they had to take one. And as soon as they did, you know, they managed the game in a slightly different way. When T Chelsea were on the back foot, City was stepping up. And yeah, from that Chelsea perspective, it's, it's so disappointing. Like I was here for the um, Carabao final against Liverpool and they had so many chances that day to seal the deal. And then it progressively got worse. And today, I don't think some of those guys realized how big an opportunity that was. They played to however they wanted to play, stuck to the manager's task to a certain extent. But this is, as, as Craig said, as everyone's seen, this is the worst we've seen City play in a long time. A side that's been unbeaten since December. And I think for Chelsea to have the break that they had since playing on Monday and to know that, you know, they've got the pace to stretch the game to be aggressive. This, for me, is a bigger missed opportunity against City than, say, you know, that last that 90 minutes in, in regulation against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. But he'll probably look at his team, see who's available. Can Haaland come back? Is John Stones going to be OK? Is Grealish OK? And they know now that the push is on between now and the end of the season. And if everyone's fully fit, I think the belief is there. And to, I don't know if the guys would agree with this, by the way, but the way City play today is how you'd expect the team to play. Say if you played on a Saturday and you watch a training session on a Monday, it's people who, who aren't going through the motions, they're trying, but everything's just a little bit off. And that's the version of City that Chelsea have played today. And I think for City to get a win off the back of playing like that, I think, if anything, I think it's a big boost for them. Is that relatable, Karen? Yeah, I mean, I think Pep knew that, that his team were going to be tired today. It's completely normal. Um, I think he should manage the rest now. N the next few days are going to be really important for, for the squad in general, for this final push. Um, you know, hopefully, for Arsenal's sake, that they... they uh... Well, no one's talking about Arsenal. <laughs> well, you're bringing them into the equation. No one cares about that. <laughs> but I think... Um, yeah, I think I think he definitely needs to get the, the rest right because you know he's had a few players you know pull him up and say that they need a rest. This window is is really important after after the Champions League exit and and getting through today. They play Thursday. I wouldn't be surprised as Nadem said if he if he gives them a couple of days off to switch off mentally and and physically. Um, and get ready for the final for the final six seven games. It was interesting during the game you said this felt almost like a Community Shield, like almost pre season that sort of standard. Yeah, and that, that, and that was because, as Nadam said, almost every City player, possibly apart from the goalkeeper, every City player was just, maybe a, I say a little bit off, and some of them quite a lot off. Mm. And that just took the sting out of their performance, which is normally like fast and furious, and then teams are defending for, for their life, and then maybe get the odd counter attack. Everything was slow, and so that allowed Chelsea some some areas of domination in the game but that's kind of how it felt and that's a perfect scenario right for for Chelsea it's a perfect scenario to get City in that sort of mental state and physical state and and this Chelsea side have just just not been good enough see this horrible run that they've accumulated at Wembley continues of course we mentioned it and Lane didn't win them losing the Carabao Cup final, lost on penalties against Liverpool. Last when you go back to 2022, uh, where they beat Palace in the FA Cup semi-final by two goals to nil. Uh, since then, it's over 300 minutes at Wembley without finding a back, back, the back of the net. Uh, where do you stand on the penalty shell, on the handball? I, I was okay with it because I, I you know, don't think there's any doubt it, it, it glances the arm, but I think it was more of a glance than anything else. Well, it still hits the arm. It doesn't matter if it's a glance or a brush or a hit. Well, it's a bit, well it does, because it's a bit like making a challenge, and if, if a player gets the, gets the finest smidge... Craig, of, watch his left arm. No, I understand that, but it's a bit like making a challenge and a player gets the merest smidge on the ball. It barely changes direction. That barely changes direction. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's a 50-50 call. He's trying to tuck it in, isn't he? Clearly, you can see that. I mean, if it's a direct in the arm and drops down, then yeah, of course it's a penalty. But we're going to argue the semantics here, of you know, there was a player in the in the game at uh, 
uh, it was actually the Arsenal game at Brighton uh, a week or two ago where there was a challenge in the box a penalty was given for Jesus mm -hmm. there was some contact on the ball but there wasn't enough contact the ball barely changed trajectory and I think that's the way certainly I feel that's the way the officials have looked at that one I'm a little surprised though that I would one of the things I would say I'm a little surprised that he didn't at least allow them, the referee Michael Oliver to go and make that determination right. That, right. that's where I would have a problem uh, Nathan, between now and the end of the season, what do you do if you're a Chelsea player? <laughs> well, that's, that, that feels so harsh. We just try and play some games and win some games, Dan. What are you, what are you trying to get me in trouble for? I'm not trying to get you in trouble. Obviously, this is like, a huge oh, opportunity, no, Blair. You know, we've got to go back now. You've got six no, games listen. remaining. And it just feels like this whole season listen. has been another massive disappointment for Chelsea. Well, that's from your perspective, and I think that's a reasonably fair one. But for these guys, they want to be out there, they want to be playing, they want to be winning games. And I think at times, how you can finish a season can sort of dictate how people perceive it. And I think for that fan base, the guys who will be turning up to watch them, the ones who will be watching them on TV, they want to see the team start to show some level of progress. Yes, they've messed up again at Wembley, but they can win the next game. They're playing, I think they're playing Arsenal midweek. What a result that could be for them. I think further down the road, they've got other games of that nature, and they can finish higher, maybe. Just maybe they could even finish in Europe, as crazy as that may sound. So it's not all doom and gloom, even though these lows are getting so low. And I'll tell you what, Dan, one thing I've noticed, since, it start, since I retired and started coming to Wembley, Chelsea always seem to be losing. Mm -hmm. So I think I might have to try and start watching other teams here because at the minute I'm, I'm a bit of a blue nightmare. Nathan, we see the Manchester City players warming. How much did you hate that as a player? I just want to, I just want to go home, wouldn't you? Dan... Hey, guy like me, Dan, I was never on the bench. Never, ever, ever on the bench. I don't know what all this running lock is. Yeah, yeah. Kieran, this did you nice. have to do it's that? It's not nice. Oh, when, it was a nightmare. When you, yeah. It gets you the day off, though. Oh, it means you get the day off the next day? If you just do a couple of lengths of Wembley at the end, then it's all right? It's more than a couple. No. <laughs> uh, just no. You did everything there not to throw uh, Yes. <laughs> one or two individuals under the bus. What we needed was El Kai Gundawan just to say, oh, it was Nico Jackson. <laughs> yes. Here's what he should have done. We would have been in the Champions League semi other. final if it wasn't for Ronald Aruha <laughs> making bad mistakes and getting himself. We'd have, been in a, we'd have been at Wembley if Nico Jackson could just finish. Yeah. That's what he's thinking, yeah. but he's a manager. What's it, what's it like when you've got a player who's had a nightmare in the dressing room afterwards? <sighs> I mean,. The, the problem is it's not just one player, right? I mean, maybe today Nicholas Jackson could have, could have finished a, a lot of his chances. But over the course of, of this season, there's been a lot of players that have been underperforming for Chelsea. So I think in this situation, it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, I think for me, Pochettino, what he said at the beginning there, he said that they, they shouldn't have conceded when they did. And it's, he's so right. I mean, on a day where City have not been at their best, don't concede. Right. Don't concede in the last five minutes. Take it to extra time. Just get it to extra time. If you realise that you're, you're, not, you know, you're not clinical and you're, you're not finishing your chances, shut up shop for the last 10 minutes. Take it to extra time. They're going to be obviously exhausted. They just played 120 minutes in Madrid. And, uh, and see what you can do from there. And that's, that's kind of the, that's the, those signs of the naivety of, of, of Chelsea at the moment. Players will never say to other players, who have honestly missed chances. Not, nothing, right. you know, again, it's the Nico Jackson story here. He worked hard. He run the channels, he tried his best. No, it, it's not picking on the player for lack of any effort. He's just not a natural, confident finisher. And when you're in the dressing room, there is some element of empathy for that because you, yeah. you're not trying. But when it gets to, and, and you know, you're not going around saying, you should have scored and you, and, that, that really shouldn't and doesn't happen. Maybe, maybe it does the odd place, but I, I wouldn't think so. But where, the, where it can sort of fester is if it, if, it, if it continues to happen and happen and happen, is when senior players go to the manager and say, listen, we need to find a different way here. Right. We need to find a different way because this, this, is, this is not happening and it's affecting everybody. And I, I kind of get that scenario at the moment. They have to get through to the summer, see where they are. Could be Europe, might not be. Uh, but they need to find a solution to these problems. Otherwise, otherwise, 
Mr Pochettino is going to be the next one with his head on the block. It, it, it's that simple. Uh, so, Manchester City through to the final last year. They faced Manchester United in the final, didn't they? And that could very well happen again. They take on Coventry City tomorrow. That's our early game on ESPN. Plus, coverage starts at 10 a.m. Eastern. You'll be returning to Wembley for that game for us, Nadam. What are you expecting? <laughs> I'm expecting United to have a solid approach, but then to still have one or two issues against the Coventry side, who did very well in the round before against Wolves. I think they were deserved winners away at Molyneux, and I think that says a lot about their style of play. And I think from a matchup standpoint, I think it will cause United issues, but United are the better side. They've got the element of attack, but they will give up opportunities because that's what United do. I think we've seen that, especially from when 2024 has kicked in, that the other sides will get opportunities, but will Coventry be able to take theirs? I'm not sure. But ultimately, I think all roads lead towards another Manchester derby final. And if it doesn't end up being that way, I'm really hopeful that Craig Burley will be on air to discuss it.